Good afternoon, Dupe. Once again, thank you for agreeing to be interviewed by the African Capitalism Institute. During this interview, we'd like to discuss Terragro, how Afrikapitalist Terragro's business practices are, mm -hmm. and how Terragro is contributing to developing Nigeria's agriculture sector. But before we begin, we'd like you to give a brief introduction on Terragro and its main focus areas. Okay. Good afternoon, Zomachi. Um, thank you for the interview um, and nice to um, be able to share a bit about Terragro's story. Um, Terragro is the agri-business subsidiary of Transcop. Um, Transcop, as you must know, is um, a conglomerate listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Um, it's invested in power, oil and gas and agribusiness. Um, at Terragro, um, we're actually into the um, processing of juice concentrates um, using high technology to achieve this objective. Um, where the agribusiness subsidiary of Transcorp, like I mentioned earlier on, but specifically for now, we're actually into producing juice concentrate um, for the market. Given Nigeria's high unemployment rate, what are the steps Terago has taken to employ locals in the communities that Terago operates in? Okay, so Terago, like I mentioned earlier on, was incorporated in 2008. Um, we're located in Benue State, um, the fruit basket of Nigeria. I think prior to Terago actually being in, in, in that area, um, what you'd find even in the campaign trail that just recently, for the recently completed elections, was that you'd find um, a lot of the um, governors, the politicians saying that, you know, a lot of their fruits were actually going to waste. Oranges were being used to play football locally in the in the state. Mangoes were being rotten to, um, and thrown around. Um, so I think what Terago has actually been able to do is to really cap capture that market and be able to um, provide a, a um, economic growth or viability for their con for for that area as well as for Nigeria. Um, our, our workforce is local, um, mainly from Benue State as well as from Nigeria. Really, um, there's no juice concentrate or cup company in Nigeria in terms of orange juice concentrate. So we're actually the first of its kind. Um, we're const constantly working to improve employment in uh, employment in that area, um, working with local farmers to ensure that they understand what is required of them, and also employing from the youths um, from the universities, etc., just to make sure that we're able to contribute our quota. Thank you, Jupe. So, given the state of infrastructure in Nigeria in general. How does this affect Terago's competitiveness? And what steps has Terago taken to maintain or improve the infrastructure in the area it does in the areas it does business in? Okay, so there are a few things to consider. Infrastructure is a challenge generally in Nigeria for the economy, for entrepreneurs. It's, it's a constant challenge. I think what we do is we all find our ways to work around it and ensure that we're able to deliver competitively. Specifically for Terragro, um, the orange juice concentrate which we produce is actually listed on the commodity exchange and there's a global price for this. Um, so constantly we're having to make sure that we stay competitive. In terms of infrastructure, as you must be aware, we actually source our raw materials from the deep interiors. So there's the road network challenges, there's the transportation, challenges there all of these challenges and to add on to that as well we've also got obviously the power issues that every every other business faces as well so we're constantly always trying to look for um, more innovative ways to ensure that we can reduce our costs we also work very closely with the Benue state government to ensure that you know there's an improvement in the infrastructure improvement in the processes on ground to ensure that we can get you know um, an improved system generally um, but it's something that we just constantly have to work against um, to deliver competitively on the global scale okay thank you Dube. Um, does Terragro use advanced technology in its operations and if it does has any steps been taken to train the local staff um, to use such technology? Okay. Um, yes, we do. Um, like I said earlier on, you know, um, Terago is the first of its kind juice concentrate plant in Nigeria. Um, so a lot of the technology that we're having to use is obviously advanced. Mm -hmm. um, juice concentrate is produced in the US, produced in Spain and other such countries. So what we do is source our machinery and equipment from some of those locations. Um, the technology is updated, is 
you know, world-class technology that we actually use at our plant. Um, as part of our training, we work very closely with the manufacturers as well as with the suppliers to ensure that there's ongoing training on a regular basis. Um, we, we have um, training where they actually come and spend some time with us at the plant and take everyone through. We also have training in terms of like actual off-site training, which is almost like web-based, internet-based that actually goes on as well. In addition, because the labs is actually a critical area, um, obviously there's a lot of testing that goes on for our products, um, you know, to, to ensure that we can meet the quality requirements of our clients. Um, so there's constantly a lot of training that goes on to that in terms of lab, how do we ensure that the testing is as globally expected, etc. So there is a lot of training constantly on a regular basis for all staff on ground. So um, outside advanced technology used to produce the concentrates um, in the labs and in the, in, in the factories, are there any other tra training that's given to local staff mm -hmm. to improve their skills? Mm -hmm. um, there's like I, I, I'm not sure if I had mentioned, but um, Tago is ISO certified. We also has, have the FSS certification as well. So all of those certifications actually require a, a, a basic training that must go in. And we an audit is actually carried out on a regular basis from an international team. And part of it is to ensure that we have the right processes in place. We have the right training for all of the staff. So there's constant training for ba um, from basic to very senior training that goes on for all staff. In addition, um, I'm not sure if you ask me that later on, but what we also do is actually train the farmers that we work with as well. So on a regular basis, we actually go out to the farms, um, ensure that the farmers are trained in terms of what the expectation is from the, the quality, the consistency, the taste of the oranges that actually come to us. So we're training you. Um, capacity building is such a critical area um, to ensure that our, our, our products are competitive and meet global standards. What explicit steps has Tarago taken to improve the local capacity of the farmers that it works with or um, various other members of the community that okay. Tarago works with? So, in fact, one of the things very early on when we started producing was that we would ask, we would go to the farms, would and um, you know, talk to the farmers, engage them, etc., and then ask for the supplies to be delivered to us. And we found that we were actually turning back a lot of the trucks of oranges that came to us. One, because they didn't have a clear understanding of what was required in terms of quality, in terms of even picking. Obviously, they're picking the fruits before the time, the packaging is all wrong, all of that. So we've had to invest quite a significant amount of time um, just to really train them. In fact, what we did over the last season was to really get our lab people to actually be on the site almost like sleeping and living out of the, the farm sites with them to actually take them through the testing to say this is the source the size of the oranges we expect, the color of the oranges we expect because all of those things actually impact the criteria and the requirements that we're looking at. So in terms of the consistency, the bricks, you know, some, some of the, the, the key things that we look out for. In addition, um, one of the things that we've had to do is obviously to work closely with the universities, University of Agriculture in Benue State. We also have some organizations, international donor agencies, organizations that have visited us to say, okay, they would like to understand what the key challenges are. And constantly what comes on top is really the capacity building for the farmers. Because clearly if your raw materials are not right, then it's going to impact the product at the end. Um, in addition to working with the farmers, what we're looking at obviously is as we progress to also do some backward integration of our, for, for, for Terago, um, which would be we have more control in terms of the siblings, um, in terms of of the hybrid of the seeds and the duration to actually get the quality of the oranges and fruits that we want. But on a constant basis, we're working with all the farmers to ensure that there's an improvement in what they deliver to us. Does Terragro support the local entrepreneurship ecosystem in any way? Um, we do. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the farming businesses, I shouldn't even call them farming businesses in the past, were just, you know, people that had neglected their farms. So either they have farms that have been in the family, you know, for a long time, and because there was nobody actively purchasing these fruits from them, those, farm, those, those businesses or those farms were just kind of like neglected. Um, so we've had to support them to say that, look, there's a ready market for your products. You know, um, what do you require to make sure that it works? Some of them have come back to us to say, you know, if we can, if you can guarantee that you will always buy 
buy from us, we, we're willing to invest in that. Mm -hmm. some, have, some have come back to say, okay, you know, introduce and do a bank linkage so that we can get the resources required to ensure that the business is sustainable for them, either by investing in trucks to deliver to Terago or by investing more in seedlings, etc. So we work, you know, very closely with them to ensure that they have the resources that they require to be able to meet their obligations and meet, you know, the, to run a business and not just have it as a side business. Does Terago export at this stage? And okay. if it does, does it, does it export to other African countries? Okay. Um, so an interesting fact to note is that Nigeria actually imports $1 billion worth of juice concentrate on an annual basis. Um, so whilst you, like I said, um, Terago is the first of its kind, juice concentrate, orange juice, mango juice. Um, so there, there's significant volume of juice manufacturers, but they're actually importing from other countries. Um, so we're producing presently local to, to deliver to as a, as a substitution for the imports to juice manufacturers. We're rapidly looking to expand. In fact, we're, we're in discussions presently with one of the leading international juice manufacturers who actually want us to expand with them to Senegal and other West African countries. So it's very, it's a, an excite, it's exciting times and it's a great opportunity for us. So we're actually working very fast to make sure that we can, we, we can deliver to Africa. Mm. Um, I think that generally um, the recent government has achieved a lot in terms of agriculture. There's a lot more room for, 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 um, for progress. Um, obviously with all of what is going on generally in the economy with the drop in the price of oil and the foreign exchange etc. Um, I think it's becoming more pressing the need to actually have policies in place that encourage a diversified economy. Um, we work very closely with the, the, the government. Um, one of the things that has just come up is actually an agriculture um, association that can begin to, you know, talk in terms of policies as one voice so that the challenges can actually be aired across board. Um, you know, so that has actually been instituted right now and we're part, Terago is a part of that. In terms of specific, specific benefits, um, you know, we have benefited in terms of like pioneer status, um, which means, you know, like I said, first of its kind. So we have some exemptions in terms of corporate tax that we've been able to benefit from from being the first of its kind in that field. So it's we were working closely with the government to ensure that there are policies that are favorable. Like I mentioned earlier on, you know, the the imports is so significant that even by putting a policy in place to have some of um, the local manufacturers even just use a percentage of their concentrates, um, source, as, as even just sourcing a percentage of their local concentrate locally would really change the dynamics of Terago. But I think what is more critical also is to ensure that we can deliver on a consistent basis and meet the quality. Um, and it would give room, obviously, for, um, for competition, which is good because the market is large enough. As an indigenous company, how difficult has it been for Terago to access finance? And what is Terago's main source of finance? Okay. Um, as I mentioned earlier on, Terago is the agribusiness subsidiary of Transcop. Um, Transcop is listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. So in a way, we have access to some sort of financing from that avenue. However, um, you know, in Nigeria, challenge is access to finance, to agric finance. Um, agric requires that um, you understand the business, the cycle of the business, and the patient capital required to ensure that this um, is achieved is not necessarily easily available or easily tapped into in, the, in, in Nigeria. Also, there's no bank um, that is focused mainly on giving agric loans. And this is essential because when you understand the business, then it's easier to really understand the cycle, easier to be able to give that funding. Um, however, Terago was able to tap into the central bank um, agric financing, and we've used that to be able to really grow the business beyond where we started from. With Terago's recent deal with the world's leading juice manufacturer, um, Terago has shown that it's able to meet international standards. Now, what were the key elements to achieving this important milestone? Huh. I would say real commitment and dedication and um, 
really just the quality and the thoroughness that has has gone into this process has been unreal. Um, obviously, you mentioned um, it's an international leading, world leading um, juice manufacturer. So the expectations are really tough, the criteria. And so a lot of testing of our product actually goes on, um, both locally and international. So what we've had to do is ensure that right from the beginning, from the inputs, we get it right. You know, there's no room for errors, no room for mistakes at all. Um, so ensuring that our labs are good, um, ensuring that the production is, 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 is fantastic, ensuring that the product is, you know, meets the quality standards has been really critical. Training of our staff, all of those sort of things actually go into making the final product um, meet the specification. Um, there's, you know, testing for pesticides, testing for um, the bricks, which is the sweetness, testing for oil, peel oil, which comes from the skin of the oil, from, or from the skin of the oranges, you know, so, so many things. It's been a, a really um, interesting journey for us um, because when we started out, you know, the first year we didn't meet their criteria. We went back again, improved everything we're doing to ensure that we, we had a better product. That has now been achieved. And you can actually walk into any store in the market and um, buy the juice off the shelf. And it's actually made from the concentrate from Terago, which is really phenomenal for us. Thank you so much, Julia, for this interview. Um, but before I let you go, I'd like to ask you if you have any final words on Teragro's outlook, um, mm. Teragro's plans mm. to continue to develop Nigeria's agricultural sector. Okay. Um, thanks so much for the interview. Um, I think just closing, um, like I said, we're the agribusiness subsidiary. So though we have started our business really focused on the processing of juice concentrates, it's really just the beginning. It's one area that we intend to master and then move on. Um, we're, we're defining our, our agribusiness strategy. We're reviewing to see what other opportunities exist within this market. Um, I think with the, with the expertise that we have now, then it's easy to be able to replicate it across, the, across um, other areas in agri. Um, the, the market is huge, um, we're achieving a lot. Um, I think we, we definitely want to reach very quickly um, where we're able to supply a significant amount, 50% or more, to the juice manufacturers in Nigeria, as well as now begin really to supply to other African markets. So that is immediate, in the immediate for us. We want to consolidate in terms of our orange juice concentrate and mango puree. And we're also looking to expand, um, you know, what are the byproducts that come from our orange juice manufacturing? You know, the, we have the peel oil, for instance, and the pharmaceutical cleaning companies that are actually using this to make their own products so there's 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 a wide space that we're looking to play in so i think it's just really to watch this space um, and that will become the leading agricultural um company in nigeria in 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 the near future thank you Dube. we wish thank you. you all the best in your plans to continue to diversify the nigerian economy thank you thank you very much